Hey, what up, YouTube? It's Maddie, the Dungeon Master, coming at you. I got a quick video that I'm going to make starring these little bad boys. I started coming up with all these little patterns to make these braces for um, church pews. I decided to skip all that noise because I was going to have to cut all those out individually. and decided to take a page right out of the um, Black Magic Craft playbook and glue it to the end of this and use my uh, homemade hot wire foam cutter to give it a give it a good cut but in order to do that I'm gonna have to trace the pattern on so I'm gonna glue it down with a glue stick right here my little Elmer's glue stick I'm gonna slop up the end real good stick this on there making sure that the lines are actually within the bounds of the piece looking pretty good okay and while the glue is still you know not entirely dry I'm gonna slide it around to try to make it fit and we're starting to look like we're in the right territory here even if I have to set it off just a little bit crooked to make sure that I'm that every edge is on there and if you want to check you can fold the paper over like that over the edges and you can see I'm clearly not going to go over there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this ballpoint pen and trace the lines right on the end here. And I like to go in deep, go back and forth over the same line and try to get the straight lines straight, but I'm not looking for perfection, I'm just looking for approximation. The eyes are easily fooled at this scale, so you can go down pretty low in detail. I like the way uh, Jeremy at Black Magic Craft does his wood grain exaggerated with uh, with pens in the XPS foam. And I'm a huge fan of the XPS foam. It's very versatile, very malleable. So there's that, and that should be good enough. So I'll peel this off. And now that I can kind of see the pattern in it, get rid of that glue, I can trace it again. right there and go all the way around okay now I've got my little church pew drawn indented on there and we're gonna get the hot wire foam cutter and cut these out I may have to cut this down in order to get a little bit more control over it because this piece is kind of long so We'll see about that. Um, if I can get the, uh, I want to make eight of these benches and I need two per bench. So if we're looking at eighth inch roughly, then I should be able to get 16 easily out of half of this piece. Stay tuned. All right, so we got the hot wire table set up and I've got my foam here and I've decided I'm going to go ahead and cut this down. And there's no harm in it. So I'm gonna just turn my switch on here. I made this hot wire foam cutter. I suggest that you purchase one if you're looking for better results. I am a stubborn individual, and if I can't afford it, I like to make it. And uh, I wanna get a prox on, but they're way too expensive for me right now. And as long as I turn my power off on here, my power supply won't overheat. So, all right, so I've cut this down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to follow the line while keeping it as close to the base here as I can. I might even come in from the side here a little bit. You can see I have this gap here from a, a previous uh, version of this that I made. And, well, it's garbage, but it works. So we're going to turn this on, move my guide out of the way, and we're going to try to do this. One thing at a time. Let's just go slow. This doesn't get so hot that I can't control it, which is nice. One, we got one line cut. And what I'll do is I'll come out like this. Get it in there. And then I'll come over here. Attack it again from this angle. good already. That's what I'm looking. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. We have cut ourselves our benches. It's a little awkward on this side. I'm going to fix it a little bit over here. There we go. Took that apart. Just give it a once over. And we're going to clean it up. I'm going to take yet another page from the Black Magic Pit Playbook and bust out the emery boards. I got these at my dollar store. Be careful when sanding XPS. I don't care how small of a, how the job you're doing, how little you're actually taking off. It's toxic. Don't breathe it. It's not good for you. Okay? I'm going to go in here. I'm going to clean this up best I can. Round this edge off. without breaking it up. I'm not being too aggressive here and I'm using a fine grit. I just want to trim the shape of this a little bit and I'm coming in just rounding off this top and it's thinner down here than up here but again I'm not looking to be perfect. Now if I get really really cranky about this I can go get some uh, I have some rounded files that I can use but these are the edge of the peel, not the actual wood part. So, these can be a little imperfect as long as they sit reasonably well and they look nice. I don't think any of my players are going to care too much. So what we got here is one giant bench. I'm just sanding it all down. I'm not going to be too aggressive on the edges here because it's going to be um, it's going to be cut down, and these are all going to change. So, just trying to come in there and clean some of that up. All right. So now I don't have a cool locking grid or guide, rather, like uh, Jeremy has. So I have to be careful with this. So what I'm going to do is I got to set this and hold it. I'm going to go, that looks about good. I'm just going to eyeball these. And I'm just going to cut a bunch of them. Here it goes. Just following through with the cut. Allowing the pressure that I'm pushing this way to carry the piece through without leaving it to melt. Sometimes they like to hang up on my wire and keep burning, which is always fun when you try and do something small. See these fumes coming off. Don't breathe those. Those are not, not healthy. I'm breathing low and exhaling out of my mouth to keep them away from my face. I could put a fan on, but I'm too lazy. We got some foam like actually dripping down the wire here. Just go in. Quickly and aggressively, just pew, right through. I'll do the, um, I'll use the Black Magic uh, base coat. The uh, I love his base coat, the matte Mod Podge with black craft paint. Works perfectly. I've yet to have any trouble with it. And here's the last one. Okay, I'm done. Cut them all out. I don't see how many we have. I, I lost count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eight. I actually have enough for nine, but I'm not going to make nine. I'm only making uh, I'm only making those. But I'll save those pieces for extras just in case I screw something up. Okay, so let me put the these back, and now I'm going to make some planks to glue on, for which we're also going to use XPS foam. And I have this little piece here. We're going to need a piece for the back and a piece for the base. So it's two each. 
16, that's 32 wooden planks we need. And I want to make them two inches long. Minus how much space are we dealing with here? We've got eights. Three eighths. We've got three eighths of an inch worth of thickness there. So I need to shave three eighths off of two inches. So one and five eighths inches. Okay, so we're gonna go there. I need a pen. Five eighths inches, and that will make the whole bench. Hmm. I think they're going to be longer. I'm going to make them longer. That doesn't seem long enough. Uh, we'll make them three inches. So we'll go two and five eighths. Yeah, I didn't. That's not long enough. So one and five eighths was not long enough. We're going to go that long. That's better. I like that better. All right. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to trim this up real quick. save everything, every little scrap. Save a bunch of it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this in half this way. Again, just going to eyeball it. Okay. Now you can get eight planks out of each of these. So I'm going to go I'm going to keep ripping it in half until I get what I'm looking for. So one becomes two, two becomes four, and it just exponentially increases. So that, and I'm just eyeballing center. I'm not doing this perfectly. Okay. It's not so hot that I can't touch it briefly. I just don't want to because it does kind of burn a little bit. So now I'm just ripping these down into planks. Just cut careful at the end there. Try to keep them all the same size. These are too flimsy to use, so I'm not going to use those. I'm just going to keep on ripping them down. A little bit of a goop drip in here. I'm just waiting for it. Time to do some assembly. I got some three quarter inch push pins here. I've got my my sides. I'm gonna use uh, Eileen's tacky glue to hold these together because I feel like hot glue would be too much of a mess for these little pieces. So we have our, our deals here and they're gonna easily fit in place right like that. I'm not gonna worry about perfection again, but. So we're gonna have to glue them in and pin them. So what I'm gonna do is, first of all, I want some wood grain on these. So I'm gonna take a pen, the, another page, I, I might as well just borrow the whole damn book from Jeremy, and uh, put some wood grain on these with a wire brush, on all of them, on all the pieces. So following the what would be the natural grain of wood, I'm gonna go this way. And I don't feel like doing the exaggerated wood grain on these. There's, too much uh, to do the assembly line with that. Got that, that's one. Just run it over a couple times until you get the desired effect. See, it's nice deep gouges in there. both sides taking care of that one. this one might be too thin we'll revisit that one in a minute it might be too flimsy to hold the bench together I don't want these to fall apart or break so I considered using wood but what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up using tacky glue and pinning them but leaving the pins in for stability because if you do that then they'll have a place to to rest the weight on, and then you can sit a miniature on them if you want. 
little stand of miniature. I know the tabletop miniatures can't sit per se, but you know, the game we play, use your imagination. Again, nice deep wood grain. I'm loving it. It's coming out nice. Looks really well on this foam. Very soft. And I love how it's making the gouges deeper towards the end. It's where a board would naturally kind of start to warp and fray. Oop. Oh, see, we have a break. This is why you make extras. I just dip into the pile and pull out a new one. Keep going. Static. <laughs> are coming out. Such a cool technique. Never thought to do this before. Looks like a rough hewn natural timber. I can go back afterwards and gouge out some of the corners using the nail file and make it look even more distressed and worn. Now let's do what we've got here. Oh these that's right. It's okay. I don't know sure I like that. Um, yeah, I don't like that. I'm not going to use it. I'm not going to draw any kind of texture on the sides of this. I'm just going to leave it. Screw it. Yeah, I don't like how that came out. And that's the beauty of this. Is Anytime you don't like it, just start over. Throw it out. Begin again. So I've got my tacky glue ready to go. I'm going to use a brush to apply it. So I'm going to get myself a little container. I use these little disposable cups. And I've got brushes that I use for this thing, but I'm going to go with a smaller one. I've got these cheap ones that I got from Walmart, and uh, I don't care if they get messed up with glue. I rinse them out and, you know, use them until they're unusable. bunch of tacky glue in here and we're gonna try to do this this is gonna be difficult they're gonna be fussy they're gonna be finicky it's okay there's a pretty good amount of wiggle room when it comes to using this glue the only thing I don't like is how damn long it takes to get out of the nozzle I just put a bunch in the bottom of this cup I doubt I'll use all of it but just want to make sure I have enough on hand. I'm doing this because I don't feel like waiting for this thing to flow or reflow every time. And if I put it upside down in a can or a cup or some such, it just drips out and you waste it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the edges of these a little bit. Put the glue on. A good amount. I'm not going to you know, glob it. I don't want it to be gloopy. It's going to dry clear, but I don't want it to be gloopy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it to the side here, kind of temporarily, and then put a pin in. 
and I'm kind of holding it in place while I do this. And there we go. It's together. And I'm putting the, I don't know if you can see that, I'm putting the back on kind of a slant because that's how they are. I'm just trying to keep it in line with this piece right here. These pins will be a nice addition. They'll kind of look like nails. That's that. That's in. Okay. Just make sure that I'm using my fingernail to push them in. Kind of make sure they're in really good. We want that tight. And I'm going to take this brush and clean up the paint. My brush starts to get too sticky and little pieces of foam start to come off. I will uh, I'll dip it in water, wipe it off, and that'll refresh the brush. And I want to make sure I've got these down there. Okay, so what I want to do is put some more glue. These are not going to be level. I can already tell you right now that these are not going to be level. They may end up not sitting straight. They're not going to be perfect. I'm not looking for production quality here. I'm not selling these. I'm not making money off of them. And I'm following this line here, putting it about an eighth of an inch down. So I'm following this straight edge right there that goes down into the corner. I'm getting another pin. Line it up. It's the board. Push it in. Oops, be careful. Like I said, they're finicky. So, okay, it's alright. Pin in, but it didn't find the board. So, I'll push the pin through anyway, and then I'll just line the board up. Okay. And these pins are going to help make this so much stronger. Go to the other side here. We'll do the same thing. We'll line that up with another edge. Put some glue on them. Getting the ends all nice and gluey. Get one of these. And we can set it like this. If I notice one of them is too long, cut it off with my knife. Try to make them the same length. That's not always easy. I cut off just a sliver. Re-glue. Reapply the glue. It's going to fit perfectly, and there's not going to be a bend. I did not make these so that miniatures could stand on them. They're just for decoration, just for style. Um, if you want to make the like you know the butt portion of the seat, if you make the seat portion of the bench, I'm sorry, um, you know, usable by a miniature, just drop it down a little bit, and then you'll be able to balance a miniature on there. But I mean, this is difficult. It keeps popping off the side. I don't get it straight enough. Okay. I don't want pins sticking out. I don't want that sticking out the side.
It's a good thing I only have to make eight of these. business that's one all right so I've got them all glued up I just got to get the black magic base coat on them and uh, we'll be good to go stick around okay so I waited for the paint to dry on these I did the uh, black magic base coat as uh, demonstrated by uh, black magic craft uh, Jeremy um, I did end up putting some hot glue underneath in the corners for support because the glue that I put there, the white PVA glue, ended up not drying. Um, so uh, let's get these painted up and uh, see how they look uh, with our scenery. So I'm going to take some brown, just a regular Craft Smart brown from uh, Michaels, and put it in my palette myself a good amount so I don't have to again and um, I do use a wet palette when I'm painting miniatures but for this I always water down my paints unless I'm dry brushing and I'll just put like a few drops in there and mix it up you put it on in a few coats and you get a more even coating of paint than if you just gloop it on Took me forever to learn that, but you can see on here some of the pins sticking out from the supports right there. Now, um, hopefully the paint will cover those up. I won't have to worry about them, but uh, I probably won't care too much anyway. I'll probably just leave them. So let's get these painted and uh, we'll come right back afterwards. There's a little thing here that I like to do when I'm when I'm painting. I'm feeling a little impatient. I'll hit it with a, a hair dryer. To speed it up and you can see how it's glossy and you'll see how it changes to a flat and how the color sticks out a lot more. Yeah, if I don't blow it everywhere. There we go. Before it dries completely, I'll go in and I'll attack these corners and get these globules out of the corners. We want to avoid having the paint pool when we put the black wash on later. We'll take care of all that recessed area. see it's all nice and dry it's actually starting to firm up a little which is nice because I was worried these were going to be too flimsy but they're uh, that black magic base coat man that stuff is amazing I wish I had known about that sooner I could have saved myself a ton of money on uh, black primer especially for uh, cheap homemade tabletop uh, terrain it's good for miniatures but and for pre uh, what do you call it? Pre-manufactured plastics. But I have found that the black magic base coat works a lot better on foam. All right, so these are dry and painted up, and I'm gonna dry put a dry brush on them. I'm gonna use a bigger brush. Um, I'm gonna put a dry brush of khaki on them so that they can get the nice wood grain look. I'm going to use my palette here again. 
and I'm not going to add any water to this because I'm dry brushing. So I'm just going to take just a little bit, get it on my brush, get my brush nice and saturated, wipe off the excess, and then wipe off a little bit more on this paper towel. I don't want to wipe off too much. Again, we're painting terrain, not miniatures, so I'm not too worried about the fine details on this. So I'm just going to lightly just go across that and see how it brings out the detail in the grain. Going, I was going with the grain, but it works a little better if you go against the grain, like that. And on the edges, you get those little highlights. And you just dry brush it until you're satisfied. You get the nice wood texture on there. And uh, get it to come out really, really sharp contrast. You can't even see the pins anymore that were sticking up because of all the paint that's gone on here. I'm saying it's getting the, the edges real nice. I'll just accentuate this wood grain. Just keep wiping off that excess. And if it's, I get a little wet spot here on my paper towel, if it's wet enough, I don't even have to go back to the, the puddle over here. See, I'm just taking nice strokes, nice dry brush, most of the paint wiped off. And I'm getting those details to stand out, the raised areas. That's what you want to have coming through on your painting. And I know it's very unlikely that anyone is ever going to see the underside of these, but who knows. If you ever want to have a scene where the place has been ransacked or whatever, I, I know these are church pews, but I mean, you could just use them as common benches in a, a townscape or a cityscape, like a town hall or courtroom, something like that, a park. I, don't, I tend not to have too many parks in my D&D campaign, if you know what I mean. So that's it, and we'll just get, uh, we'll get the rest of these uh, dry brushed, and then the uh, next step is to do the washing. Okay, so now what I have here is some homemade black wash. I'm just looking for a good brush to put it on with. I have a nice thick one here, a nice bushy brush. I like using these because they sop up a lot. I made this using Rinse Aid, Cascade Rinse Aid, and uh, some black paint and a little bit of water. I, um, you notice there's bubbles in there. There was way too much Rinse Aid. Um, lesson learned, it still works. It's not as good as I'd like it to be, but um, there's many, many, many other videos out there for making of washes. Um, I will be getting some new washes very soon, as soon as I have the extra funds. So we're going to square a bunch of this into our tray here. It smells like dish soap. It's pretty funny. And then uh, I'm just going to apply it liberally. I mean, really, really get it on there. And it'll make those details just really pop. You can already see the wood grain starting to show up pretty vividly. I'll get all of these washed up like so. And I am just being absolutely carefree with this. I do not care how sloppy it is because I want it in every creek, every crack, every crevice. I want it all filled up with this black pigmentation. And I want a little bit of that black pigmentation to dull the coating, to dull the other colors, I mean, because it will give it that really beaten up, old, weathered look. If I get enough of it on there, some of it will even settle towards the bottom of these legs here make it look like it's an actual pew. 
All right, just like that, they're complete. Some of them I have to I had to put a little bit of hot glue on. They don't look too pretty on the bottom on some of them, but I'm really happy with how these came out overall. Uh, now the last thing for me to do is to spray them with a, a matte finish and uh, seal them up. But they're more or less ready for the table. Okay, so like I said, I uh, I made the chapel by miscast terrain. But I did some very um, black magic craft basing on it. But I did the iron doors with the rings, and I used uh, push pins for the rivets. I had some of this uh, this moss from a camping trip. This is uh, called old man's beard. It grows all over the north northeast. And uh, it grows mostly around pine trees, but it does grow on some maples, so it's fairly easy to find. I, uh, I hung a little lamp from these features on the front of the roofing, using some uh, jewelry wire and some rings, and a little Hearst Arts mold that I have. I don't know if you can see it, but there's stained glass there that I made using a piece of uh, blister pack and some uh, Sharpies. A little bit of masking and... Um, and some drawing and you can have stained glass on your in your windows um, I left the windows down below open so that they could be uh, so you could go through and in and out them with uh, with the miniatures I'll just do a quick 360 here you can see the the roofing details the, the shingles and the colors I used on those I just dry brushed a little bit of uh, granite gray with some uh, English ivy green to give it the uh, like it had mold and um, I base coated the exterior in pewter gray and then I dry brushed granite gray over the top of it some more moss go around to the back and you see the same thing and you can see the stained glass a lot better from this angle I did it on both the top windows. Coming around the side here. Again. All in all, I'd say I'm pretty happy with this project, but it's not the end of it. You can take the top off to get at the stuff inside, and you can see the, the pews that I just made to go inside this church. Got a couple of more Hearst Arts molds, a bookcase that I made a long time ago with the little books on it. And uh, some general scribbling on there. And I did the, the same wood floor technique that Jeremy at Black Magic does. Kind of carried it off to the, over to the side there, give it a little bit more uh, texture. And all in all, I'm very happy with how this came out. So, uh, if you liked the video, hit that like button, subscribe. And, uh, yeah, I hope to make more of these. Thanks, everybody.